Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is a little bit of a different video from what I normally do. But a couple of weeks ago, the story broke that a popular brand of electrolyte drink mix contained maltodextrin. That brand is Element. And one of the claims that Element makes about their product is that it has no dodgy ingredients. At one point, Element said that there was no maltodextrin in their product. A little further down the timeline, they said that there was, I think, four milligrams is all of maltodextrin in their product. But recently, it's been discovered that it has a half gram or more. And while that quantity of maltodextrin may not be of concern to a lot of people, if you have an allergy to maltodextrin or if you're a diabetic, it is kind of problematic. The other problematic aspect of all of this is the trust aspect. Can you trust the ingredients on a package? Can you trust natural flavors? Now, historically, I have not been especially bothered by the presence of natural flavors in a product. Some people are. They say it could be anything. Well, it turns out that that's kind of right. I mean, it could be anything. It shouldn't. It should be naturally occurring chemical compounds that exist in natural food. For example, I have a printout here. This is from James Kennedy's website. I will link to that down below. It's kind of interesting. He does the chemical breakdowns of natural foods, and this is an all-natural strawberry. Oh, here, I'll put it up right over here. And if you look at this, it totally looks like frankenfood. I mean, if you saw this as a list of ingredients on a product you're buying, you'd probably say it was made in a laboratory. But this is what's in a natural strawberry. So things like 2,5-dimethyl-4-methoxy-2-H-furan-3-1. That is one ingredient right there that gives strawberries its flavor. So if a food manufacturer is doing the right thing, then the natural flavors are natural. The problem, though, is when a company doesn't do the right thing. Now, I want to give Element the benefit of the doubt. They said that they were unaware of the amount of maltodextrin that was in the natural flavorings that were provided by their supplier. The thing is, it's pretty easy to test. And I saw this video by Dr. Eric Berg on his channel showing how you can use iodine to test for the presence of a starch or maltodextrin. When you add iodine to a liquid solution that contains maltodextrin, it's going to change colors. It's going to become sort of a purple or dark blue. Whereas if a solution doesn't have any starch or maltodextrin in it, the color is going to be just sort of a kind of a very light amber color. So in this video, I'm going to test out a few products for the presence of maltodextrin. The first is going to be one that I absolutely know has maltodextrin. Then I'm going to test out two electrolyte drinks, one from Element, the other from Salty. So let me get my glasses of liquid set up and we'll start testing. So I'm going to start by creating a control uh, reference. So this is just straight tap water. Actually, all of them are at the moment. And we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know if there's a magic number. That's what I'm doing though, so that I'm consistent. I can swirl that around. And you can see that the color on this is sort of a light brown. Uh, maybe just a, a hint of, of orange to it. So that is going to be our reference. Next up, I'm going to try a product that I know has maltodextrin in it. These are the Crush Singles. Sugar-free, but uh, maltodextrin in there. I'm going to let that settle for a minute. Meanwhile, I'm going to try out some Salty. This is the Keto Chow brand of electrolyte powder. Ugh. <laughs> I don't think that was supposed to happen. And I do realize that I'm mixing these up at a concentration that is quite a bit higher than what you would normally drink. And then lastly, I got this brand new box of Element. little swirl. Give this a little swirl. It'll be interesting to see the color change on this crush since it's already orange. Mm. 
one. Ooh, definitely a different color you can see here. It, uh, it is absolutely turning purple. That's two drops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very little question on this one. That is, uh, that's definitely a color change and not the color of iodine and water. Then we have the Salty brand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give that a little swirl. You can see the color on this is quite similar to what we have here in the reference. So that would indicate that there is not maltodextrin in the salty. Then we have the element. One, oh, definitely, you can see this. It's, it hits the water. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it is pretty instant. The the color change, you can see this, definitely purple, which would indicate that there is maltodextrin in this. For a final test, I'm going to use a natural flavor. Now I've designed a couple of flavors of keto chow, and as a result, I've got a lot of these various natural flavors. This one is caramelized brown sugar. All right, this doesn't dissolve all that well, but that's okay, because if this has maltodextrin in it, it's gonna turn blue or purple. I'm kind of nervous about this, because if this does, in fact, contain maltodextrin, that is probably gonna be the end. Well, I'll, I'll just say it. That'll be the end of my relationship with Keto Chow. Here we go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not purple. So there it is. I mean, it is that simple to test for maltodextrin. So if a company says they didn't know, they didn't know a product had maltodextrin in it, it's this easy. It's this easy to test. If you found this video helpful or interesting or entertaining, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And lastly, once again, I just want to give credit to Dr. Eric Berg for his video where I saw this little trick. Thanks for watching.